Hello students, welcome to lecture 29 of the online course on Photonic Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. Today's lecture will be discussing about the losses in hollow core fibers. So here is the lecture outline, we will be discussing mainly about the cladding losses, uh, the 1 by R cube power law, radiative leakage, Rayleigh scattering and we will also discuss intermodal coupling in this context. So let us first uh, have an overview of the losses in hollow core fibers. So optical fibers are used to transport light over distances that typically range from several meters to thousands of kilometers. So over such distances, small perturbations can also lead to substantial effects. Conventional silica fibers have attained such an amazing degree of perfection that their losses are very minimal. So it's only about 0.2 dB per kilometer at the telecom wavelength of 1550 nanometer or 1.55 micron and um, are limited by a combination of intrinsic material absorption and uh, scattering from microscopic density fluctuations. Okay. So these are the uh, you know two important factors that contribute to losses that you can understand here which is intrinsic material absorption that is the inherent property of the material to absorb some portion of light and the other other uh, contribution would come from scattering that arises from microscopic uh, fluctuation in the density okay so at long wavelengths on the other hand um, you will see that for 10.6 micron um, high power lasers used in many uh, industrial and medical applications, silica and other common fiber materials are not transparent at all. Tra they are not transparent means they are basically absorbing, right? So one of the promises of the holocore uh, photonic band gap fiber is that they may allow for lower losses than are possible with the solid core fibers by relaxing the fundamental limitations which are basically imposed by the solid material properties. So in order to design fibers for such a goal, one must understand that you know different uh, loss mechanisms which are existing in the realistic fibers. So although uh, you know uh, the detailed study of each of these losses is not included in the scope of this course. But a broad overview or understanding may be you know, gained by uh, dividing the fiber losses in two categories depending on how they basically scale with radius r of the air core. So you will see that there is a trade-off between uh, losses that decrease with r, okay? um, those are basically losses associated with the field penetration into the cladding. And the other losses that basically increase with R. So these are the losses associated with the coupling between different modes, right? So this makes the choice of R a very delicate balancing act uh, that is crucial for the fiber performance, okay? So the radius of the air core plays a very, very significant role in, you know, striking that delicate balance where you will minimize both the losses. Interestingly, not uh, all losses are banned. So you can actually use some losses for your benefit as well. We'll see how that can be done. As we have seen, um, most of the proposed holo fiber designs have been multi-mode, right? So they basically support multiple guided modes which propagate at different speeds inside the fiber. So if they are not controlled or un if they are not checked properly, this would result in modal dispersion, okay? Since it is impossible to avoid exciting multiple modes and the differing velocities cause pulses to spread and information transmission to be scrambled. However, this problem is reduced in a holocore fiber by differential attenuation. Now, what is that? Some modes, typically the lower order modes have uh, much lower loss than others and thus transmission in everything 
but the lower uh, lowest loss mode will basically get filtered out after propagation over a long distance. So, only the modes which have uh, you know the lowest loss that mode will be able to you know sustain. So, that is something why we are saying that you know not all losses are bad. So, although there are possibility of multiple modes getting uh, propagated into the fiber, but while propagation you know uh, the lowest loss mode only survives and the other uh, modes basically you know uh, get cancelled out okay or they just attenuate or die down okay so that is how you know the lowest loss mode will be filtered out after propagating a long distance now let us uh, look into different cladding losses so three important uh, loss mechanisms can be associated with the amount of field that penetrates into the fiber cladding so, the first mechanism is uh, five material absorption, second is radiative leakage due to finite crystal size and the third one is basically scattering from disorder. So, all of these uh, losses basically tend to decrease as uh, the core radius r increases and we will show that um, they typically decrease uh, asymptotically as 1 by r cube. So, of these three loss mechanism, the simplest one to analyze is the material absorption and uh, this can be described by a small imaginary part i kappa that gets added to the real refractive index n. So, the kappa is known as the extinction coefficient. Okay? Now, because kappa in most transparent materials is much much smaller than n one can um, obtain essentially exact results for the loss by um, starting with the eigen modes of the lossless structure and uh, employ a perturbation theory. So, the imaginary change uh, in frequency can be written as a delta omega and this is coming because of this kappa. Okay? And to obtain the loss rate per unit distance, we could compute delta kz that comes out to be minus delta omega by vg, where you know the vg is the group velocity that is given by d omega by dkz. Okay? So, if you um, assume the decay rate alpha, which can be written as 2 imaginary of this uh, delta kz. This basically describes a decay of e to the power you know minus alpha z by 2 in the case of fields and if you take the square of it that will give you the decay in intensity. So, e to the power minus alpha z by 2 if you take whole square you will get e to the power minus alpha z. So, combining these equations the decay rate alpha due to a single absorbing material which has got a complex refractive index that can be represented as n plus i kappa you can write alpha equals basically um, 2 omega kappa divided by v g n and then you can have fraction of you know this uh, integration of epsilon e square okay, in the absorbing material. So, this is basically you know for the case of multiple materials one can simply add up uh, the decay rate that is coming from the different material de depending on the fraction of that material in that uh, composite structure. So, as a special case, uh, if the field energy propagates entirely within the material with a group velocity Vg given by C by n, as for a plane wave that neglects you know uh, material dispersion, then the bulk absorption loss can be expressed as alpha naught to be 2 omega kappa by c and that is 4 pi kappa by uh, lambda. So, once again um, if you remember that kappa is, uh, so this is the bulk absorption loss and you already know what is your decay rate alpha. Okay? So, in that case you can uh, define a useful dimensionless figure of merit that can be used for hollow code fiber mode okay? and that is basically the ratio of this uh, alpha 
and alpha naught. So, alpha by alpha naught this particular ratio can be used as a dimensionless figure of merit. So, this is also called the absorption suppression factor. So, the factor by which loss is decreased due to the portion of light in air. For example, let us consider the hollow core brake fiber and uh, suppose that the low index material has got a refractive index of N1 that is 1.6 and that has got some absorption associated. Right. So, this is typically that polymer refractive index we discussed in the last lecture. Okay. And um, this, this is motivated by the experimental fiber which was designed to operate at 10.6 uh, micron and its absorption loss um, is dominated by the effect of the low index polymer which has a bulk absorption of around uh, 50,000 dB per meter. So, corresponding to a kappa value of 0 0.01. Okay? So, if you plot the absorption suppression factor that is alpha by alpha naught uh, for the four modes of this uh, hollow core fiber okay, where the core radius is taken as uh, r equals 3 a, you will be able to see this different you know modes for uh, different frequencies appearing. Okay? So, the absorption loss uh, as you can see is basically uh, dominated by those of the low index material. So, here n equals 1.6 which are basically the shaded green parts in the inset and if you see here uh, H E 1 1. So, at the you know, uh, very starting here okay, H E 1 1 of the four modes the solid red line shows you H E 1 1. Okay. So, this is basically uh, showing you the lowest loss. Okay. So, what is this figure uh, just to uh, tell you once again. So, this is basically uh, the scaling of absorption suppression factor that is alpha over alpha naught versus the core radius again it is normalized as you can see it is r by a and uh, this, this graph is shown at uh, quarter wave frequency which is omega a by 2 pi c equals 0 0.30 okay? and uh, you can correlate that uh, from here. Okay? So, you are actually plotting it here. 0.3 okay, only for that part fine and uh, what we could see we could see 4 uh, fibers and and this all this calculation are for this 2 different material which is 2.7 and 1.6 chalcogenide glass and the polymer right. So, now when you start analyzing you will see that you know uh, HE11 is the fundamental mode that has got the lowest loss. And as we keep on increasing the radius, okay, T E 1 mode uh, becomes the lowest one which has got the lowest loss. Okay. So, even um, for this kind of small radius, you can see that the absorption losses can be suppressed by uh, 10 to the minus 1 that is a factor of 10. Okay. You can suppress the losses by 10. So, notice that the absorption losses basically diverge as the zero group velocity bandage of uh, the T01 uh, and or, e, or EH11, okay? they, they basically uh, approaches okay? and this, uh, this radius however is much smaller than the experimental structure which has no uh, dramatic effect on the loss. So, regardless of the polarization, so here you can see that uh, the modes, all these modes basically um, approach a 1 by r cube dependence which is also shown here okay? and you can overall see that T01 mode has basically um, the lowest asymptotic loss. Okay? And um, at the experimental radius of uh, r equals 80 a, you can see that H E 1 1 mode is giving you a suppression of almost 10 to the power uh, 
minus 5 that is the separation factor ok. So, indeed um, loss losses less than 1 dB per meter were observed experimentally representing a separation of the polymer absorption by over 4 orders of magnitude right right. So, as as I mentioned already that this is basically a uh, you know reference line that shows you know the asymptote for scaling as 1 by r cube and all of this modes basically follow that. So, that is what we will be discussing that 1 by r cube power law. So, what is the source of this uh, 1 by r cube power law? If you revisit this equation that gives you the decay rate, you have seen that uh, you know uh, the key fact from this equation is the contribution of the loss from a particular absorbing material and it is basically proportional to the fraction of the electric field energy in the material. So, this is the electric field energy and it is proportional to the fraction of that material in the whole structure. So, for a core guided mode no, not, not a surface state the losses will basically scale as 1 by r and if the field penetrates a certain distance a dp inside the cladding then the fraction of the field in the cladding goes uh, as the penetration area okay that is uh, 2 pi r dp divided by the core area which is pi r square and that yields 1 by r okay so for such an argument however um, we can assume that the field amplitude E in the cladding compared uh, to the core is basically independent of R uh, and in fact uh, this is typically not the case. So, you can actually see uh, for the field intensity distribution of T01 mode ok um, which by analogy with the metal waveguide has a mode of you know. So, we, we, we discussed that it has got a the metal waveguide has got a node uh, at the border or the boundary. So, here also you can see that you know the field is almost uh, 0 when it is this particular boundary that is small r equals capital R right. So, as a consequence um, you can think of T 0 1's cladding electric field is basically proportional to the field not to the field at uh, uh, small r equals capital R because uh, the field here is uh, basically 0 ok. Rather uh, it is proportional to the slope of this one that is the d e over d r at r equals r and um, which basically scales as uh, 1 by r over a fixed maximum electric field in the core. So, that way you know uh, you can see that T 0 1's uh, electric field intensity in the cladding will be able to pick up another 1 by r square factor. So, that will actually make the net absorption loss to scale as 1 by r cube ok. So, you actually get the 1 by r factor from here and you pick up this additional 1 by r square factor and finally, the absorption loss scales as 1 by r cube. So, in fact, uh, um, a similar argument holds for uh, all core modes because of the scalar limit for any given mode in the limit of large r the mode will become uh, more and more similar to a plane wave propagating along the z axis. So, its uh, dispersion relation would approach that of the light line in air and its penetration depth into the cladding will become negligible uh, compared to the state of the transverse oscillations. These were precisely the conditions in which the scalar limit applies. And in this limit, we can describe the mode as a linear polarization multiplied by a scalar amplitude psi x y ok x comma y um, that is uh, 0 in the cladding. So, in reality there is some non-zero amplitude in the cladding, but because of the approximate uh, 
zero boundary condition at you know small r equals capital R okay that is exactly on the boundary okay of the cladding and co so you can see that the amplitude of the cladding field goes as 1 by r just as we explained for t01 and that is how you know all the modes basically um, approach a 1 by r cube scaling so next important cladding loss is the radiative leakage so because a real photonic crystal fiber cannot have an infinite number of uh, periodic uh, crystal or crystal periods okay so it has to be terminated somewhere right so the fields will have a small exponential tail beyond the edge of the crystal and uh, that will couple to the radiating modes again this loss also scales as 1 by r cube so 1 by r factor is coming from the surface area uh, by volume ratio if you take that uh, ratio that is a 1 by r and then you have uh, 1 by r square factor coming from field amplitude scaling in the scalar limit so as a practical manner however such radiation uh, can be more easily reduced by simply increasing the number of periods okay so for the case of high contrast uh, band gap fiber you will see that the radiative leakage typically would decrease by a factor of 10 for every period or two okay that is added to the cladding so as a result as a result um, you know even the most stringent loss requirements can be met by uh, including just a few dozen periods at max so the absorption loss uh, yeah at at most so the third one uh, that that decides the third mechanism for the cladding losses is the Rayleigh scattering so finally one can also have losses that originates from disorders which causes light to scatter and radiate by breaking the translational symmetry um, because photonic crystal fibers uh, typically have many high contrast interfaces those are like you know the every boundary between the high and the low dielectric medium the most serious problem seems to be due to you know the surface roughness especially in silica based uh, fibers at wavelengths where the absorption is small so a detailed analysis of this kind of disorder is indeed uh, very complicated but you know a few general statements can be made for the usual case in which the length scale of the roughness is uh, much smaller than the wavelength okay so this kind of um, scattering from roughness which are much smaller than the wavelength can be um, covered within the scope of Rayleigh scattering the scattered power is basically the lost power is roughly proportional to um, the intensity of the electric field okay so that is modulus e square at the scattering location and to the square of the scatterer's volume okay so you can see that uh, this uh, e square modulus e square dependence produces the same 1 by r cube kind of scaling for disorder induced loss as for the absorption loss since uh, disorder again affects only a portion of the field that is inside the cladding where the interfaces or materials are present so what about you know um, a two dimensionally periodic photonic crystal fiber um, such as you know the hollow core uh, holy structure so overall the same asymptotic uh, 1 by r cube scaling will apply here the core area by the core interface by area ratio again goes as 1 by r and you will get a additional 1 by r square factor coming from the cladding field amplitude in the scalar limit so 
Now, there may be an additional wrinkle coming from the proliferation of the um, surface states, right. So, in this case, you will get some surface states if you remember. So, unless you know um, the crystal termination is chosen in this kind of a way which we have already discussed, this, this basically um, makes sure the air gaps are also you know cut in halves, okay. And this would help us to eliminate the surface state as you can see in the figure as the core size basically increases here and uh, you know you will have very nice uh, uh, air, air core modes, right. Now, this uh, surface states cross the guided band and chop up its usual uh, bandwidth. So, precisely such a uh, phenomena can be observed uh, experimentally when an air core of the fiber that you can see here is uh, replaced by a size of you know air core which is 2.2 times the diameter. Okay? So, what happens in that case that is like this kind of a case. So, from here you are actually trying to make a larger air core that cuts through this uh, air holes, periodic air holes. So, because of that you are eliminating the surface uh, states and the losses will also reduce by a factor of 8. So, you can straight away come down from 13 dB per kilometer to 1.6 dB per kilometer. But you know the bandwidth was also reduced by a factor of 5 because you know some uh, surface uh, states were not eliminated. Okay? So, the surface states uh, below the light line do not have absorption, leakage, scattering that would decrease with R. Okay? So, in the previous case you have seen that kind of a, uh, not this one, okay, I think the figure is not shown here. For this one you could, see, if you remember there is a surface state over here. Okay? So, that was the surface state below the light line. Um, that do not have this absorption, leakage, scattering losses that would decrease with R. Okay? So, they basically remain um, localized at the cladding surface regardless of the value of the radius R. So, the last topic in this lecture will be intermodal coupling. So, given the 1 by R square R cube given the 1 by R cube dependencies of the loss mechanisms that we have discussed before, it may seem that you know increasing the core radius R is always a you know uh, winning strategy because uh, the loss will decay as 1 by R cube. But this is not always the case. As uh, radius R will grow, we worsen the losses and other problems due to the intermodal coupling. Now, when you increase the radius of the fiber core, you will uh, you are actually allowing more and more modes to uh, exist and that will allow you know different modes to couple with other and that would you know make the transfer of energy possible from one mode to another at the same you know frequency but at different kz. So, this is uh, typically caused by the fiber non-uniformities that break the translational symmetry in Z. And this is a problem because higher order modes will have uh, higher losses uh, because of stronger penetration into cladding and uh, will also produce modal dispersion. And as we mentioned above, the differential losses of the higher order modes will suppress uh, the modal dispersion, but not if we couple them, you know, couple into them faster, then they are basically filtered out. So, before they are filtered out, if you couple with them, it is like a, your the energy will get transferred to those modes and then finally, it will escape. So, that is not going to help us, that will be counted as a loss. So, intermodal um, coupling tends to worsen with increasing uh, core radius r and there are two main reasons. The first one is that 
the number of uh, core guided modes will increase the number of modes basically scales with area so it's proportional to r square correspondingly the mode spacing that is a delta kz would decrease and uh, this makes it easier for a non uniformity to couple between different modes okay so roughly speaking you know pi by delta kz is a minimum length scale for non uniformities now if the fiber changes shape okay that could be due to you know ellipticity ellipticity or say stresses that has slightly bend the curvature so over distance of the length scale or shorter uh, the coupling between the modes would become substantial okay and the second reason would be you know that even if you maintain a fixed delta kz between the modes you will see intermodal coupling due to fiber bending okay so if the fiber bends will worsen as radius r will increase so intuitively you can say that as radius r grows the difference in path length between the different parts of the core uh, on the inside of the band and the part on the outside the difference will also grow because your radius is large okay so the result is a bigger centrifugal force that basically distorts the mode or the two modes right or multiple modes what uh, because of large radius you will have actually multiple modes so the mathematical treatment of bending is a complicated one and it involves a coordinate transformation of bent waveguide into a straight waveguide so we'll not go into that details so let us look into the final result which is pretty elegant and we can summarize it summarize it here so if we take x to be the direction away from the center of the band and if you consider x equals 0 as the center of the fiber at the band radius rb the band will effectively adds you know a perturbation delta epsilon and delta mu that will be proportional to x by rb now this basically acts as a potential ramp that pushes the field towards the outside of the band so the fiber uh, performance will then deteriorate because of two regions the first one is that far away uh, from the core the exponential tails of the guided modes will see a perturbation so large that the band gap is uh, shifted to different frequency so this will result in a radiation loss and that increases exponentially with 1 by rb so rb is the band radius and secondly for sufficiently large uh, rb the band radiation is negligible and instead the losses in high contrast photonic crystal fibers would be dominated by the coupling between the guided modes and this coupling would vary as r by rb whole square for the case of large rb since you know capital r basically the maximum value of x in the core and it does not include you know the changes in delta kz so finally another important form of intermodal coupling we'll also discuss that is the polarization mode dispersion so as the name suggests you know it has to do something with the polarization of the light that is traveling so pmd arises in an ordinary fiber because uh, the operating mode is a doubly degenerate with the two orthogonal polarization and if there is any imperfection or stress in the fiber that will that can break the symmetry and split these two uh, polarizations into two modes that travel at different speeds so this will also form you know uh, this will produce a form of modal dispersion where the pulses spread due to random imperfection of the fiber and the same thing can happen in photonic crystal fiber if we can operate in a 
doubly degenerate mode. So, the differential losses of a hollow core fiber, however, allow one to operate in a low loss, higher mode like you know, like uh, T01, and that is non degenerate, and in that way, it will be immune to uh, polarization mode dispersion. That means, no perturbation or imperfection in the fiber will be able to split that mode into two. Alternatively, one can also design a core that is so asymmetric that it only supports uh, one non-degenerate mode. So, that is also a way to you know mitigate this kind of challenges. So, that is all for this lecture. We will we'll start discussing about the applications of photonic crystals uh, fibers in the next lecture. If you have got any query regarding this lecture, you can drop an email to this particular email address dev.sigdar at iitg.ac.in plus uh, please mention uh, MOOC photonic crystal and the lecture number on the subject line for a quick response. Thank you. Mm -hmm.